Welcome to Leesburg Today's Daily Update for April 22nd. I'm Samantha Bartram. Seven members of the County Planning Commission gave their support to a proposal to construct a mixed-use development near the intersection of Route 7 and Route 28 during a work session last night. The Kinkora development has had a storied history within the county, being voted down by the previous Board of Supervisors just before it left office in 2007. The new incarnation of the project, which includes an already approved minor league baseball stadium, a performing arts center, office and retail space, and 1,400 multifamily units, has been under review by the Commission since October. The application now moves to a public hearing before the Board of Supervisors, scheduled for May 10th. The commissioners who voted in favor of the project said they believe it would anchor the Route 28 corridor and help attract some of the high-quality businesses the county is seeking. Mixed use, they said, is the future of business development. Commissioners also expressed support for the transportation improvements that would come from the proposal, including the extension of Gloucester Parkway and Pacific Boulevard, as well as the enhancement and protection of the Heron Rookery in the more than 100 acres of open space. Commissioners Peggy Mayo and Gigi Robinson voted against supporting the application, citing concerns with the number of residential units proposed, the ability of a community development authority to pay for road construction, and the overall intensity of the uses. Leesburg business and property owners Wednesday night got an update on the progress of zoning rules being considered for part of the town's Crescent District. A little more than a dozen people showed up for the public input session held at Idly Recreation Center. Over the past several months, the town's planning commission has been wrestling with the concept of the form-based code, which some hope would spur redevelopment in an area of the town currently dominated by auto-intensive uses. Planning and Zoning Director Susan Berry Hill provided a glimpse of how a form-based code could provide a different outcome than traditional zoning. The emphasis is on the form and how the buildings relate to the street and how your public space, the, the sidewalks, the streets, the open areas, how those are all built into the overall uh, look of the community. So there's much more emphasis on um, what your community is going to look like and it's more predictable that way than a regular traditional zoning ordinance. Um, there's a lot of emphasis on walkability and how you can increase pedestrian activity, um, street activity um, in terms of outdoor eating and whatnot, um, and open space. So it's, um, it's something that will be more predictable in terms of what the community is going to, uh, they can set their expectations for what they want the community to look like through the code, rather than waiting for developers to come in and, and hopefully um, provide something that the community uh, is, is uh, uh, appreciative of. The Planning Commission will hold a public hearing on the form-based code at its first meeting in June and hopes to provide a recommenda recommendation to the Town Council at that time. The Council would likely vote on the measure sometime in the late summer months. West Virginia Division of History and Culture Commissioner Randall Reed Smith visited with Loud Loudoun County Supervisors and Judge Thomas Horn today to present them with a plaque commemorating the completion of the boundary survey between Virginia and West Virginia along the Loudoun and Jefferson County lines. Since Jefferson County was formed in 1801 and West Virginia separated from Virginia during the Civil War in 1863, the ridge line of the Blue Ridge Mountains has served as a makeshift border between the two states. Kevin Vaughn, who worked with the Patton, Harris, and Rust engineering firm when it was granted the contract to survey the area and establish the boundary, said 32 markers have been placed along the 16-mile boundary be between Bluemont and Harpers Ferry. The main uh, task was to set the lines at least no further than a mile apart. Well, for 16 miles, we ended up setting about 32, 33 miles, so it was almost double the length. Mm -hmm. So that was probably the hardest part, setting the monuments. But we were lucky. We didn't find any bear, no snakes. And they didn't find any snow. <laughs> Similar plaques will be placed in the Virginia and West Virginia state capitals, as well as the Jefferson County Government Building. Finally, area residents are invited to participate in an awareness walk for autism hosted by the Ark of Loudoun and Kids with Purpose, set to take place one week from today. The evening begins with an open house tour of ARC's facility and grounds located at the Margaret Paxson Memorial Learning and Resource Campus in Leesburg. 
Live music and featured performances, games and giveaways will take place, and refreshments will be served. There's no cost to participate, though guests are asked to RSVP. The event is being held in honor of Autism Awareness Month. To learn more about the Awareness Walk for Autism, held from 5 to 7 p.m. Thursday, April 29th, call 540-571-1414 or visit thearcofloudon.org. For more on these and other stories around our community, visit us online at leesburgtoday.com.